Good evening, welcome to the Loyola Academy Virtual College Fair. Thank you all for joining us. Here's a few housekeeping things before we get started this evening. If you have any questions at all for the college reps, please use the Q&A button to type your questions in for the presenters at any time this evening. Your camera and microphones are off, so please focus on the presenters and make sure you can hear all that they have to say. This is the final presentation of the evening, so after this one, there will be a short survey after you finish up that you'll fill out for us before you leave the event. And the recording of this will be available at strivescan.com slash Loyola in about a week. So look for that information about that as well. So that's the major housekeeping stuff that we have for this evening. Now I'm gonna turn it over to the presenters. And first up, we're gonna have the University of Tennessee. Hi, I will get ready to share my screen here and then we'll get started. And there we go. Okay, hi, my name is Courtney Kleinens and I'm the Midwest Regional Representative for the University of Tennessee located in Knoxville, Tennessee. We are in Eastern Tennessee and I'm gonna talk a little bit about Knoxville. We've been coined a nature loving, adventure seeking, artsy kind of town. And I think that that is so true and genuine to, to what we are and what Knoxville is. So we're less than 45 minutes from the Great Smoky Mountains. So we say the mountains are right in our backyard. Our campus is along the Tennessee River. So there's tons of opportunities for paddle boarding, kayaking, going on a hike, tons of greenways for bike riding. So there's tons of ways to be active outside. There's a vibrant and historic downtown region that has great little shops, food festivals, music festivals. So there's always things going on when you're not studying, right? Um, that you can do right in the heart of Knoxville, which is located right by our campus. And then a little bit about the campus. So we are Tennessee's flagship institution. So we were founded in 1794 and we were the first public university west of the Appalachian Divide. And we have a strong belief in our volunteer tradition. So we are the Tennessee volunteers and we take pride in our service above self. Um, and we like to say that we give our all for Tennessee. So we definitely look for that in our students. We are research one Carnegie classification. So that is a top tier when we're looking at research and our students have lots of opportunities to get engaged in research, working with professors. We have a UT Space Institute, which students can participate in and um, we've produced 10 astronauts. So uh, definitely there's opportunities within our aerospace engineering and our partnership with the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So we have a lot of opportunities that gives us that research one classification. We do have the most Goldwater Scholars, so we were pretty excited about that. We uh, had the most this past year, so that's something we take a lot of pride in, and that's a very prestigious award in the STEM field. And then we're a top producing institution for Fulbright scholarships, and we are number one for the third year in a row for SEC schools. So again, we take tradition uh, in our research and academics and also sports as well. So I mentioned the UT Space Institute. We also co-manage the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So we are one of less than 10 institutions that have that privilege. So again, we take a lot of pride in that. We are division one, part of the SEC. We have around 24,000 undergraduate students. So we're a mid-sized institution. Total with graduate students, we sit around 30,000. We have over 600 organizations you can get involved in and then over 360 majors. So there's plenty of options for you to choose from. We have nine colleges within our undergraduate programs and they are listed on my screen. So we have our Herbert College of Agriculture, College of Architecture and Design, College of Arts and Sciences, our Haslam College of Business, one of our well-known programs, colleges, College of Communication and Information, College of Education, Health and Human Sciences, our Tickle College of Engineering, also very well-known and well-established, College of Nursing and College of Social Work. I wanna point out that a few of those colleges do have additional admission review um, and competitive deadlines. So we're looking at the College of Architecture and Design, the Tickle College of Engineering, and then our College of Nursing. Those do take a separate review process. So think about that when you're applying to the university. The Tennessee student experience. So um, we put our students first. You can make a big campus feel smaller as you'll see there on my screen. So we really want our students to be engaged and get involved. Our Center for Career Development and Academic Exploration has great opportunities for students to work with career coaches, to go to job fairs, job shadow, look at internships and network with our over 250,000 alumni. So there's definitely opportunities to get involved and network there for your future goal after you graduate and become an alumni with us. 
all new students get what's called a Vol Success Team. So every new student gets an academic advisor, a career coach, and then a one-stop counselor. And that's someone who can help you with the transition to college, paying your bills, how to take care of all your finances. So every student gets three individual coaches for them and they're called their Vol Success Team. So that's something we are very excited about and our students seem to appreciate that um, and helping with the transition piece. We do require our first year students to live on campus and we have 13 residence halls to choose from and three different housing styles. So you can choose from an apartment style, community style and suite styles. And we offer several living learning communities where students in, interested in the same majors or um, fields of study or organizations can pick uh, places to live in similar situations. Making a big campus feel smaller, over 600 clubs and organizations to get involved in, intramurals and club sports. Greek life is very popular, sorority and fraternity. And then of course, study abroad programs. We have abundance of programs to choose from, from two weeks to full academic year. And hopefully we'll get swinging back into those um, in this next coming year. To apply to the university, you can apply via our website or on the Common App. We do not have a preference, so whichever one uh, is easier for you. We are self-reported, so that means once you fill out that application online and submit, you will receive an email from us to then self-report your academic record. It is not the self-reported that's on the Common App. You do have to do a separate self-reporting, so make sure you're checking your email. You can upload your own transcript. It does not have to be official, and we do have a $50 application fee. This year we were test optional and we're hoping that that's how we're going to look for next year. We're looking at high school rigor and curriculum, your senior year coursework, and if you're in college prep work, your essays that you contribute, and then extracurricular and leadership activities, and of course that volunteer experience, because again we are the Tennessee Volunteers and take a lot of pride in that. Recommendation letters and a supporting statement are optional for you when you complete that application. Important dates to remember, we have an early action deadline of November 1st, so make sure you're paying attention to that deadline for those um, competitive programs, and that's also how you can apply for competitive scholarships. Our regular admission deadline is December 15th. You want to make sure you apply by December 15th for our institutional scholarships. Our out-of-state costs, we are looking at 43000 over 43000 That's tuition fees, room, and board. And we do offer scholarships ranging from $4,000 to $18,000 to help bring that cost down. And again, our competitive scholarships, you need to apply by November 1st. You're allowed to visit campus. Our tours are open. You can check out our website. And there's my contact information. So feel free to reach out. That is my cell and my email. Feel free to reach out anytime. Go Vols! Thank you so much, University of Tennessee. Next, we're going to go up to the University of Vermont. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ashley Brown, and I serve as the Regional Associate Director of Admission uh, based in Chicago, Illinois, full time. Um, so I'm really excited to be here to chat with you all this evening a little bit about UVM. So uh, to get started here, uh, UVM is located about 14 hours away from Chicago. That's if you're driving. If you're flying, we can get you there uh, maybe in a little under two hours uh, on a direct flight right out of O'Hare. And we've got about 10,000 undergraduate students on our campus currently and our average class size hovers just around 32 students. You'll also see here on the left side of the screen that about 73% of our students come from out of state and around 27% of our students are native to Vermont. So all in all, our student body represents about 47 different states and about 67 different countries. We also offer over 100 majors on our campus. Uh, some of our more popular programs include business, environmental studies and sciences, psychology, political science, in addition to the health sciences as well. So if any of you students are interested in studying things like nursing or pre-med, we actually have a level one trauma center that is located right in the heart of campus. So you get a lot of great clinical work, a lot of great internship work uh, without, without ever having to leave the campus community. All right, so this is one of my favorite slides uh, because some of our distinctive qualities can on the surface seem a little bit contradictory, right? So for example, the University of Vermont is very old. Uh, we were founded in 1791 and we are the fifth oldest institution in the New England area after Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, and Brown. But we're also really new in the fact of constantly keeping pace with the changing world around us. So whether that uh, is instituting new academic majors or building new infrastructure on campus, we are very cognizant of the ever-changing society that we find ourselves in. 
It is also true that we are big and small, so we're really big compared to some of those uh, really small liberal arts colleges across the country, but also really small in comparison to some of those larger national research institutions as well. Uh, it is also true that we are both urban and open. So being urban, we are located in the beautiful city of Burlington. We are just about a 10 minute walk from the downtown area. So we are in an urban setting and we're also open as well. So that means that our natural landscape is very open. Uh, you'll get sweeping views of the Green and Adirondack Mountains. We also sit right on Lake Champlain. So uh, it really is a, a beautiful place to experience that natural landscape as well. This slide just talks a little bit about our hands-on experiences. So experiential learning is a critical component to a UVM education. So here on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see some of the most recent companies that our students have interned with, and you'll see some pretty big name companies there. Uh, however, here on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that we've got about 10,000 internships listed uh, in our career center. So uh, the entire breadth and depth of our hands-on opportunities are really boundless. Uh, you know, we, we give a lot of great opportunities for students not only to do internships but also research opportunities and service learning opportunities as well. So students are finding out about these uh, opportunities through the Career Center, through their academic advisors, um, faculty and staff, and just word of mouth too. So all in all, experiential learning, like I said, is a very critical part of a UVM education and something that we value very greatly. This slide talks a little bit about our living and learning communities. So 100% uh, of first year students must live in a living and learning community and students do have to live on campus for their first two years. Uh, the great thing about our living and learning communities is that it really enables students to hone in on a passion they have outside of their academic major. So say for example, if a student is interested in studying business, but they're also really passionate about sustainability as well, they can come to UVM, earn that business degree, but also be be um, enriched outside of the classroom via their living and learning community in the area of sustainability as well. So all of our students rant and rave about um, how wonderful our living and learning communities are. And I believe it really helps to foster a sense of friendship and camaraderie and community right off the bat for the vast majority of our students. Students do have the opportunity to live off campus their junior and senior year. We do have a lot of housing um, around campus that students are able to take advantage of if they are ready to move off of campus as an upperclassman. This slide just talks a little bit about our uh, uh, commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion on campus at UVM. We operate out of six core common ground values, and those are listed here on the left-hand side of the screen. These values are incredibly important to us, and they really drive um, really all that we do on campus. And we've taken these values a step further and integrated them into our academic curriculum as well. So on the bottom right-hand side, um, you'll see some education requirements. And in order for a student to graduate, from the University of Vermont. Um, they have to complete their academic degree, but also a class in foundational writing and information literacy, quantitative reasoning, sustainability, in addition to two non-European diversity courses as well. So as I said, that's just a further commitment to these values that are listed here. On the top right hand side of the screen, we do have some campus identity centers and these are for students who are looking for that smaller community uh, within the larger context of the University of Vermont. So uh, the great thing about these centers is that you don't have to um, particularly identify um, with that certain group in order to participate in that uh, center's uh, activities or you know just go to their events. So we've got our mosaic Center for Students of Color, our PRISM Center for any students who identify as LGBTQIA+, our Interfaith Center, in addition to our Women and Gender Equity Center as well. So all in all, um, our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion is something that we value greatly and something that we're very proud of as well. Uh, lastly here, just want to talk a little bit about the admissions process. We do review students on a holistic basis for admission, meaning that we don't just look at your GPA or your test scores if you choose to submit them. Uh, we do look at letters of recommendation, your extracurricular activities, um, in addition to um, you know, your optional essay, your personal essay to really determine if you're a strong fit for the University of Vermont. 
So average GPA we see hovers just around a 3.7. Historically, we've seen a 28 to a 32 middle 50% for that ACT. That would be the SAT equivalent as well. Um, we do offer scholarships for students as well. So they go from $8,000 and going upwards into $20,000 per year for our out-of-state students. You're automatically considered for those um, upon being admitted to the university. No separate scholarship application for that. So again, thank you all so much. My name is Ashley Brown. I will put my information in the chat if you have any questions um, after we're done. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, University of Vermont. And do remember that if you do have questions for any of the reps at all this evening, please use the Q&A button that we have below. Next, we're gonna have University of Massachusetts Lowell. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. My name is Michael Belcher. I am Director of International and Multicultural Admissions at the University of Massachusetts Lowell. And I'd like to begin with a short video. I'm so pleased to share information about the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Uh, we are located just 25 miles north of Boston, a medium-sized campus of just about 11,500 undergraduate students, average class size around 30 students per class. Uh, we're growing in our infrastructure, 14 new buildings in the last 10 years. And we really do focus on learning with purpose, hands-on training and research, uh, in innovative academic programs. 120 different undergraduate degree programs throughout the College of Engineering, the Manning School of Business, the Zuckerberg College of Health Sciences, Fine Arts, and we have a number of 50, uh, we have 50 bachelor to bachelor's degree options where you can complete two degrees in five years. We offer some of the very rare uh, degree programs such as forensic science, plastics engineering, uh, sound recording technology, robotics uh, and STEM teaching minor through our UTeach program. Uh, so amazing opportunities, again, for hands-on learning, research opportunities from year one, uh, and great scholarship programs and experiential learning in the form of uh, co-ops and internships. And we have seen students work with uh, very well-renowned, world-known companies. Here are just a few of the examples of students and their internship uh, in co-op locations, companies that are, again, very well known, very well regarded, Raytheon, uh, Bose, uh, just a number of, of outstanding opportunities for our students. So many things to, to do, so many student activities, uh, 275 plus organizations, Division I sports, as you heard, uh, great concerts. We've had amazing uh, speakers visit campus and enrich the lives of our students. Uh, our uh, athletic programs continue to break new barriers and do very well. Uh, and it's, it's uh, certainly a, a very proud campus. In terms of the admissions process, we accept certainly the common application, coalition application, our own web application, we certainly will waive the application fee for out-of-state students. And we typically are looking for SAT score ranges between 1100 and 1130, depending on your degree program of, of choice 
score 21 to 23 ACT, uh, roughly 3.0 to 3.3 for your average GPA, again, depending on your degree program of choice. All of the standard uh, uh, components of the application would, would apply to UMass Lowell, your personal essay, letter of recommendation. You may submit more than, than one if you would like. And you see our deadlines here for early action, November 5th. That will include all nursing applications, one of our most competitive degree programs. And uh, then early action round two, January the 5th and regular decision, February the 5th. Throughout the admissions process, we consider every applicant for a merit-based scholarship. So you need not submit a separate application for a merit scholarship. Uh, and we are uh, very happy to consider students for that. So I will be very happy to speak with uh, anyone uh, in the uh, Q&A and certainly be available for questions afterwards. So thank you so much. All right, thank you, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Next, we're gonna have American University. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. Let me get my presentation up real quick. Okay, well, my name is Mary Ann Hollander and I am one of the assistant directors in the Office of Admissions at American University. Um, and if you're not familiar with American, we are located in Washington, DC. We are up in Northwest DC. So while you might be imagining Capitol Hill and kind of the hubbub of downtown, we're up in a little bit more of a residential area in Northwest DC up in Tinley Town, but we're still just four miles from the White House. So it's really easy to get around. There's a Metro stop really close by. Um, and as a student, you have free access to all of the metros and buses all throughout the city. So we are about 14,000 students, so we're kind of right, right in that sweet spot of not too big, not too small. Um, we have about 8,500 undergraduate students, so it feel, still kind of feels like a liberal arts kind of campus that size, but um, we have a lot of the opportunities that a larger campus has. Um, but despite that size, we actually have an average class size of 23, so we see that commitment, of, we have that commitment of keeping that number low in order to give you the best academic experience that we can. Um, and then additionally, our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. Um, kind of what our student body um, looks like and where they come from. We have about 32% students of color on campus. We have students from across the country. All 50 states are represented on our campus and we truly do get students from all across. Well, there are, we do have some local students and quite a few from the Northeast. We have a growing number from the Midwest, a growing number from the West Coast. So you're gonna be meeting lots of students from all over the US and then additionally all across the world. We have 122 um, countries represented in our student body as well. So we have a wide variety of majors um, to study at AU. Um, some of our most popular ones obviously would be political science being our location here in DC and then also international service, but then we have a ton of other options. And what something really cool about AU is we really value academic flexibility. So when you're applying to AU, we don't select our class based on what their majors are. So um, we see that you have the option to choose whatever you want. Even as you, once you step foot on campus, you can still change your mind all the way through the end of your sophomore year. So you're not committed to the major that you apply with, um, and you don't have to feel like you have to pick one before you um, apply either. So we have a lot of really great opportunities within our academics. Um, if you do have questions about a specific major, definitely reach out. I'm happy to kind of fill you in on the details. That being said, we're not all about academics. We want you to have fun and meet lots of fun people um, and be active on campus socially. So we have, we are a D1 school in the Patriot League. So we have sports to attend, lots of student clubs to join. Um, we also are, um, have a lot of intramurals, Greek life. We are uh, voted the most politically active campus um, in the country. And so if that's something you're passionate about, you'll definitely find that here and opportunities to spread your um, social activism wings here in DC um, also. And then we also are the first carbon neutral campus um, in the, the country as well. So being um, protecting our planet is something that's really important to AU. And so we put our money where our mouth is and how to have made some infrastructure changes that allow us um, to keep our carbon footprint very small, if none at all. 
Um, and one really valuable thing that we have at AU is that 91% of our students walk across the stage at graduation having had at least one internship, if not more. Um, DC, while being known, obviously, as the capital of, of the US, there's lots of opportunities within the government for internships, but then there's also a ton of big businesses based here, nonprofits, NGOs, international organizations, think tanks, research facilities, all types of things here. Um, and so those opportunities abound to really let you get your feet wet in a lot of different situations to see where you fit in, where you want your first job to be, and all those opportunities just add up to setting you further and further apart from the other students who are also entering the job market along with you, but you have all these great experiences to share. Additionally, a large portion of our students study abroad at some point while they're here, about 75% of them. So all of that stuff is done in-house, which means that you can use your um, financial aid, both federal and AU grant and loans, as well as merit scholarships, all go towards you studying abroad. Um, students study abroad for all different amounts of time and all across the world. So you can go to all the continents except for Antarctica. Currently, we don't have a program. We can't send you there, but we can send you just about anywhere else. Um, and you can go for maybe a couple week long trip, maybe over the summer, or you can even go for a full academic term. So it really ranges. Here's a quick glance of our admitted student profile. This is the middle 50%. So remember we have 25% of students above this, 25% of students below this. And the GPA is a little bit weird. So this is a mix of both weighted and unweighted GPA. So honestly, it's probably skewed a little higher than what it actually is. Um, additionally, we are a test optional school. We have been for 10 years. So it's something that we're committed to knowing that taking a, a standardized test is not a great predictor of, of your success in college or in life. And so we see that if you feel, if you're proud of your score, we're more than happy to consider it as part of your application. But if you're not, no pressure at all to submit that. A quick overview of kind of some of our admission stuff. Um, we are an early decision only school, so we only offer early decision, not early action. We do have two opportunities for you to apply early decision. Our first deadline is November 15th. Our second is January 15th. There's no difference between the two. There's just a, a kind of the timing on your end, whatever's easiest for you. And then additionally, we have a regular decision, which is where the largest proportion of our students come in and our, that deadline is January 15th. Um, our requirements are very similar to what everyone else has said so far, so application, transcript, test scores or not, um, letters of recommendation, um, activity report. We do have an application fee, but we never want that to be a barrier to you applying to AU. So if you do need a waiver for that, that you might not qualify for through um, SAT or through your school, just reach out to me and I can help um, get that figured out for you. Um, and then we'll have a, a recommendation letter and of course your college essay as well. As far as financial aid goes, we also offer both need-based and merit-based aid. We do require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. The CSS profile is a little less um, common. And so what that does, it provides us the opportunity to award you grant aid through AU. And so that's why we require that um, document. And then as well, we offer merit-based aid. So that's merit scholarships based off of the rigor of the courses that you're taking, your success, academic success in high school, and you're automatically considered for those um, as, if, as an applicant, if you're admitted um, and you ex receive one, it will be in your acceptance packet. And those range from $8,000 to $24,000 a year. So here's my contact information. My email is mholland at american.edu. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you have. Oops. Thank you so much, American. Next, we're gonna have Savannah College of Art and Design. Thank you so much. So I will start you guys off with some of our awesome visuals because as an art school, we have some stuff that looks pretty cool. So again, uh, I'm with the Savannah College of Art and Design and we are actually the most diverse art and design university in the nation with over a hundred different degree programs. Everything from animation to architecture, interior design, industrial design, film, fashion, photography, game design. So whatever it is that you love to do for fun, chances are it translates into a major and then of course into a really awesome career. We have had students go on to work for just about everybody so Disney, Marvel, Pixar, Universal, to Google, IBM. We actually have several students uh, who work for both the CIA and the CDC as graphic designers. So they take all of the information coming in domestically and abroad and translate it into a visual so that you can actually understand what all those numbers mean. And we even have a fashion designer who works for NASA. So she's helping to create better spacesuits. 
So again, anything and everything is pretty much possible within the arts. And so this is just a quick, very basic overview of SCAD. So we do have about 15,000 students. They are from all 50 states and actually over 100 countries. About 25% of our population is international. So you're gonna to get to learn just as much from them as you do from the faculty and staff. And like we said, over 100 different degree programs. So you can design shoes and bags with accessory design. You can design cars and yachts with industrial design. We even have themed entertainment where you can design theme parks. We also do allow students to double major and actually even triple minor. So it really does become a choose your own adventure book of pretty amazing programs that you get to study. And we do have a lot of nationally and internationally ranked programs. Our animation program is one of the best in the country and arguably in the world. We have 2D, 3D, stop motion animation. There are voice acting classes. We have motion capture devices. We're actually the third largest provider of animators to Pixar. And students regularly go to Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, DreamWorks, Leica, Blue Sky, pretty much you name it. Uh, there's also game design. Game design is closing in on a $200 billion industry annually. So if anybody is yelling at you for playing games too much, you can just say it's research because it's a pretty incredible industry to get to be a part of. We do also have a lot of majors that you might not immediately associate with an art and design school. So we do offer user experience if you wanted to create apps. We have social strategy and management if anybody wanted to be a social media mogul. Uh, and again, industrial design is like the fun side of engineering. So engineers build an engine, industrial designers design the car, yacht, motorcycle, et cetera, that that engine goes into. And actually those last two designs were from some of our international students and they are water purification systems. So we do have a lot of programs, including design for sustainability and service design that actually are creative problem solving for a whole spectrum of different industries. And this is probably the most important takeaway from SCAD is our employment rate. So 99% of our 2019 graduating class was employed seeking further education or both within just 10 months of graduating. And 91% were purely employed within a creative field. So it's not like somebody got a job at Michaels or Panera after they graduated. It really actually is doing something awesome and doing something fun. Uh, we have had one of the uh, top production designers for Honda is actually a SCAD grad designing their motorcycles. We had about 250 students involved in Emmy nominated productions this year, including Stranger Things, uh, The Mandalorian and Rick and Morty. The photographer for Taylor Swift's Lover album was a SCAD grad and actually the garment Kamala Harris wore to the inauguration was designed by Christopher John Rogers, who was a pretty amazing fashion student of ours. We do actually have a program at SCAD where companies like these actually hire us to solve a real world problem. So you can actually have a class and an internship kind of at the same time. And so it's just an incredible opportunity for you to have companies like these on your resume. Like for example, we do a lot of work with Google. Uh, recently it was helping to reinvent Google Maps and kind of make it more comprehensive. So we do have a couple of campuses. Atlanta is of course a huge, awesome urban environment. It's also one of the largest filming locations in the world. So if you wanna film, check out Atlanta. Lacoste is our study abroad, which is literally a medieval village in the south of France. We do also take you to Paris for a week. So you just get to go to Paris with your friends and professors, which is never a bad deal. Savannah is our largest campus, uh, beautiful cobblestone streets, lots of historical buildings. We have about 70 buildings in Savannah, and it is also home to most of our signature events, such as our film festival, which actually draws in big Hollywood films, as well as your student film. There's also e-learning, so anywhere in the world that you want to go, you can study as long as you have internet. We do have pre-college programs where you can earn college credit over the summer or college credit while you're still in high school for half tuition. So there are lots of ways to get started early. For our application, we are on rolling admission, which is nice, no deadlines. The initial application is about 10 minutes. People have done it on their phone, super easy. 
once you send that in, you have an advisor. They'll walk you through the rest of the process. Uh, we are test optional through fall 2022. The uh, GPA for scholarship typically starts at around a 3.0, though most of our students are closer to a 3.5. And we do have a portfolio that is available for scholarship. Whether it is a standard visual portfolio of 10 to 20 pieces, we do also have a writing portfolio, an equestrian portfolio, digital and time-based for sound animation or film, or performing arts. It is all about playing to your strengths. You do not apply to a program. Once you are accepted to SCAD, you are accepted to all of the different campuses and you get to choose what you wanna study and where. We do have uh, virtual daily tours and actually in-person tours. So you can look at any and all of our awesome buildings, see the technology that you'll get to use um, at any point and we'd be happy to take you around on campus. So if you guys do have any questions, please let us know. We do actually have fun workshops every Friday with faculty members. So I'll put my information in the chat and I'll be happy to send you guys more information on all the cool things that we have coming up <laughs> this spring. So thank you very much. Thank you, Savannah School College of Art and Design. That was great information that you shared for us. We really do appreciate it. And as we close off the evening, we wanna make sure that you guys get some other words of wisdom from our representatives before we finish up. And so for the representatives, could you answer the question, just give them some advice about what was something that you would wanna make sure that they knew to kind of help them through the college search process? Yeah, um, I assume we'll just go in order. So I'll yes, start. Um, yeah, so um, what I would say my best piece of advice would definitely be um, get organized. So in looking, you know, at your top choices and, and where you're wanting to go, um, make sure you're organizing deadlines when things are due for applications and scholarships. So make sure you um, are checking your email, getting those dates organized and make sure you don't miss deadlines. All right, I would say just try not to stress. I know that this process can be incredibly overwhelming. So be sure to use your resources, um, your college counselors, uh, you know, us as admissions representatives as well. And just know and have that assurance that, you know, you'll end up where you're supposed to be. So throughout this process, like I said, it may seem stressful, but it will all work out in the end. So just relax as much as possible. I would share uh, that in addition to reading brochures and uh, looking at websites, chat with as many current students as possible and connect with, with individuals on a personal level. Uh, they have so much to share about their institution, their passion. Uh, so that's what I would advise. Thank you. Yeah, so my advice would be to keep an open mind um, and let yourself be su surprised by a university you might not have thought that you would be interested in. You know, some people grow up being affi affiliated with some schools for sports or location or their parents went there, but let yourself um, really kind of apply wide. You never know what scholarship you might get from a school. Um, visit wide too, now that we're maybe being able to start visiting schools once again. Um, and just really just allow yourself to keep an open mind about the whole process. And that is so true that Ash what Ashley said is you, you'll end up where you need to be. Everything was all great advice. And the key is just remember that we are your resource. So please feel free to ask us anything and everything all the time. Um, what I always think is important and really what SCAD thinks is important is where do uh, that college's alumni wind up. So definitely, you know, ask where your alumni are kind of being employed. If it's somewhere that you're like, wow, that sounds awesome, or that's a place that I've been looking at, then that's a great school for you to look into. If it's a number of schools or, you know, employers that you're like, meh, or I've never heard of them, <laughs> that it might not exactly be the right fit. So it's difficult to know kind of where you want to wind up after college um, just yet but start kind of looking for schools that have actually employed people in that arena that you're trying to get into. All right, that was great information that you all shared. Um, thank you all for joining us this evening to the participants that came to the session. Thank you so much for that. Reps, thank you so much as well for giving your time. Um, after you finish up, there will be a quick four question survey that you'll fill out for the evening. This presentation will be recorded once again, and you'll see that in about two weeks as well. But 
for everyone at Loyola Academy, thanks so much for coming this evening at all. Reps, again, thank you so much as well. We appreciate your time and everyone have a great evening. Thank you all so much for coming.